atmosphere, a lot of pressure to still perform. It's been a long day, a lot of Swiss rounds from day one and day two. And as we head into the top four, this pressure is going to get even greater somehow. Yeah, this is going to be an amazing match. We're going to be looking out to see what Sander has in store for us. We know that this deck can uh, pop off. It just takes a little bit of time and uh, the help of your friendly neighborhood Snorlax. Yeah, Sander has been playing out a lot of very long games, uh, going to those game threes, uh, the time limit, because of the way this deck functions. So he potentially is having to spend a lot more, you know, mental resources to navigate these games when you're playing a deck that consistently perhaps goes down to almost decking out or playing a deck that has no Pokemon on the bench and you're all in on just your active to keep you in it. You know, that's a little bit of scary mental fatigue. You're gonna, you're gonna take a little bit of a wear and tear there, so to speak. And I'm wondering, as we get into the top four, can Sander really maintain the level of play that he needs to? I'm gonna guess yes. <laughs> He's probably put himself in this situation 10,000 times. I gotta try to hype it up <laughs> somehow, Kyle. No, this man loves to play cards, throw them down, get down to three cards left in deck, and then go infinite. That's how we play, mm -hmm. and it is going to surely be the strategy here today. I'm so excited to go ahead and get into the action. Let's go ahead and see what the prize cards have in store for us. Mm -hmm. We know on Sander's side, not terribly relevant. Tons of Peonia gonna be played around. Azul, on the other hand, not the worst either. Going to have plenty of playability there. When you see a game set up like this, nothing too devastating in the prize cards. You know the players are going to have access to their most important tools. You're setting up for a beautiful set. We've had so many close games, close best of threes throughout today's broadcast. And it's just culminating here, finally, at NAIC in Columbus, Ohio. All right. I think believe Azul is starting us off here mm -hmm. with that flying Pikachu V. A nice card to start with, of course, in the active spot. You got that free retreat cost. We see the energy in hand as well. Attaching that to the Arceus V, getting set up, of course, for that Trinity Charge, that Trinity Nova. Just has the attach pass. That seems like a very slow play, but fortunately versus Sanders' list, there's not a lot of ways to punish this. And any other matchup, you'd think that that would be just a little bit too... Uh, you know, underwhelming. But yeah. now Sander opening us up with discounting, uh, discarding one piece of the Mewtwo V Union. Yeah, that is a great way to start. Go ahead and start tossing this bad boy into the discard pile. You're going to need to see all four pieces in the discard pile before you're allowed to make that choice if you want to bring it out or not. And uh, yeah, we see 310 hit points and that healing attack there, super regeneration. That is uh, one of the key ways to clutch out in, uh, in this match. If you can't get over that 200 damage, Mewtwo essentially just becomes immune to whatever you're trying to do when you're over on Azul's side. We can only hope that he can get an attacker set up, maybe snipe some uh, prize cards before the Mewtwo V Union is completed. Sander just taking a moment here to study the deck, knows that at the very least, the pieces are in the list and wants to make sure he knows what else is in the prizes. Gonna grab a Snorlax, playing four copies of that Gormandize Snorlax, no doubt, and just drawing tons and tons of cards, trying to get to that infinite state as quickly as he can. Yeah, we see that uh, Glaring Meowth able to help in the discard. We see that Snorlax too, so just trying to go ahead and to continue to push through this deck, draw as many cards as possible. And the, the, the Evital also is something to take note of as well, potentially a way to get rid of those double turbo energies, something that Azul mm -hmm. might have to think about here. And the mill tank is already found. This was a card that you speculated, Kyle, that Azul was already mentally preparing to get through, does have some ideas of how to get around it, and now that Sander has got it employed here so early in the game, Azul might not have had enough time to gather the resources needed. If you let that route keep building up and building up, the game could run away with you. And Sander with the full setup now has the retreat, brings the Snorlax up into the active, has the Glary Meowth, and is prepared to start discarding the rest of those Mewtwo V Union pieces if he can find them. Over to Azul, Arceus, V-Star, evolving here and into a Marnie. 
after that Gormandize went off, Sander had such a big hand, and Azul is just going to put those resources right back into the deck. Needs to start drawing and looking for something specific here. Also has access to Starbirth to maybe get two more cards to fill in whatever this hand might be missing. Yeah, just finding that double turbo energy surely has to be one of the choices here with the Starbirth. We also see the big flying Pikachu VMAX coming down. That can actually be a pretty decent attacker in this matchup, as we know that Azul is playing a little bit of techiness here. He has that Phoebe in his deck. That is one way that he can potentially sneak through some of these, uh, these Pokemon like Miltank. Ooh, yeah, again, you said that he had some secret technology. He had some ways to consider the mill tank and it frustrated him a little bit earlier in the season and now he is fully prepared when you play this flying pikachu v max it's already a bit of a silly card but you're taking it very seriously at this level of play and you're going to run just the right cards to make sure it performs its best yeah, uh, not going to deal with that again. It was only a short week ago that he had to deal with the Melt Tank, and he said, no more. I'm going <laughs> to include that Phoebe. I've got the Pow Pad as well, so that's two Melt Tanks that I could potentially get through, but Sander certainly could provide multiple Melt Tanks in a matchup if uh, he so choose. Xylene is a great way to sneak that Pokemon back into play. After checking the hand, Azul is looking at the deck, seeing what that Starbirth might need to grab finding a boss's orders, trying to plan for upcoming turns. The thing about Sanders' deck is that it doesn't necessarily want to disrupt what the opponent is doing. You just play the Snorlaxes out, and you want to get your deck set up to where it is going to enter a winning state and then you pop off from there. So Azul actually does have a lot of confidence in setting up these plays that are going to pay off a couple turns later. Yeah, expect to see Azul going for this, uh, this aggressive route. Got to continue to just push and draw prize cards as much as possible. Mm -hmm. If you can start going through Pokemon that aren't Miltank in this early stage here, maybe get three prize cards or so, then when you start to apply the pressure on the Miltank with cards maybe like that Phoebe or you start to, to bring it back without Pow Pad, you might pressure Sander into a bench that he doesn't want to play. Maybe an additional Snorlax just trying not to, to bench out and lose a game. And with that being said, Miltank does hit the active spot, and now is the moment for Azul to put that plan in motion. Sander just using the Avery here to draw a few cards. Both players have a very limited bench already, but that is the supporter for the turn. We do see an additional piece of that Mewtwo V Union in hand. Always uh, a great discard in that Galarian Meowth. Trekking Shoes, this card must be important. Sander really thinking about whether it's a keep or not and does indeed put the Cape of Toughness in hand, is looking for the Crushing Hammer here to hit a heads. Great, just easy way to discard this Mewtwo piece. Yep, trying to slow down the, his opponent in Azul a little bit, but no, not heads on that Crushing Hammer. So we're already setting up for a pretty long match, right? Sanders has been playing so many games to time. And going back over to Azul, this is the key moment where he can potentially get a big knockout, maybe use that boss's orders, bring something up, get another prize. There's nothing too specific in the prizes that he might be looking for, but it's just about slowly building that lead because you need to take six prizes in this game. You know that Sanders going to go infinite. There's no chance to just stabilize and hold on and hope for a deck out. Yeah, I think we already saw one Galarian Meowth hit the discard pile, and if we see a boss's orders on another, maybe that just makes it even harder for Sander to potentially find a Mewtwo V Union. Also, does Sander even want to go for a Mewtwo V Union True. in this True. matchup? The Mill Tank seems pretty safe right now, but of course there is some counterplay on the other side, so got to be thinking of everything here. Yeah, Sander might be focusing a little bit on this mill tank for now. And if he realizes that Azul has the tech, has the preparation to take it down, could perhaps in game two or game three try to rely a little bit heavy, uh, more heavily on the Mewtwo. Now we see that Crobat V, that can actually be a decent attacker in some positions. Bidoof coming down as well. A benefit in drawing additional cards and keeping this hand nice and fresh for Azul. 
this is a great way to also get around the Roxanne, a card that has really flummoxed a lot of players throughout today and yesterday. And when you already have the industrious incisors to just draw a few more cards off of the top, it is a lot easier to get that out or at least some resources to stabilize after you get put into a brick by that trainer card. Well, I don't think you could draw up a better start for Azul. This is exactly where he wanted to be. He's taking multiple prize cards over the course of these first few turns and really not having to extend too much with his resources here. Yep, grabbing a path to the peak. Uh, not too, too much of a relevant card at the current moment, but Crobat V now on the bench. You have that additional tacker. Um, you know, a little bit of poison damage maybe goes a long way. We'll have to see. But there is the finally the discard from Sander. Slowly but surely getting these Mewtwo V Union pieces into the hand and into the discard pile. Even yeah. if it's not a Pokemon you generally want to rely on, you might as well just have this secondary idea cooking on the side. Well, we are going to see Sander go for that mill tank number two now. And this list does play three twin energies, so uh, mill tank will not just be a wall. It can attack if it so chooses. And that route just keeps building and building and building its damage, forcing Azul to maybe retreat one of these active Pokemon onto the bench. And Sander doesn't mind, right, if you just scare something important out of the active. Wow, what a nice play here, just able to play down that Flannery, and we see in hand there's an Energy, a Cape of Toughness, and a Rose Tower, a sneaky little way to start going through the deck here. Goes down to zero and draws right back up to three. Trekking Shoes found. Going to look at the next card, a Crushing Hammer. That's a keep. Going to use it now, trying to discard even more Energy. The last one was a Tails. Going to roll that die one more time. And it's another Tails. The Crushing Hammer doesn't go off, but maybe that Flannery was just enough. Well, what a two-card hand if you ever wanted to maybe start <laughs> drawing later on. Scoop up Ned and Snorlax. Beautiful. Great way to get this into the active. And Gorman dies for seven more cards. Despite everything, Sander is still beautifully executing on his game plan of just turbo drawing through the deck and getting to that win condition that he needs. Well, this is something that Azul certainly thinks about here. We've seen him holding on to those stadium cards, that path to the peak, not terribly impactful as a stadium, but as a counter stadium, it certainly is nice here. Could limit some additional draws in the Rose Tower. Going to discard one of them with the Ultra Ball here. Has another one in hand to bump this Rose Tower when the time is right. Looking through for a Pokemon, maybe going to try to find that Bibarel, maybe going to look for this Crobat VMAX. A lot of things to, to consider here. He has some really nice incisors on that young lad, and he's going to go ahead and grab that. Drawing into additional cards would be nice. Maybe finding a Marnie here, always a really strong play against a Gormandize. After your opponent has put all those cards into their hand and ended their turn, just shuffling those right back in, denying whatever play that they were thinking of is so important. But Bibarel just once again established to make sure Azul also gets these resources down. And there's the path to the peak bumping. <laughs> Double checking, making sure that star birth was used beforehand. Oh, look at that. Marnie already in hand. That's going to be so clean. Just go ahead and start shuffling Sander down to only four cards in hand now. And now with Sander with two mill tank in play, the Snorlax in the active, it's not too much of an issue in terms of options in hand. Everything you kind of need is already in play. It's just that by putting those cards back in the deck, you're just delaying Sander's ability to draw through the rest and get to that infinite cycle with the pow pad, with the Silene, and the uh, team yells cheer. Yeah, if you keep this pressure up, we're, we, we're not going to have to worry about uh, going infinite. There's not going to be enough time for that. And Azul knows that he is, uh, he is in a race right now, mm -hmm. trying to take these prize cards as quickly as possible and maybe can find the cards if he thins down well enough, as we've seen him doing, to start working through these mill tank. Because Sander has to keep promoting the Snorlax and trying to get through the deck, you're just offering these first handful of free prize cards for Azul. It's one of the rules of control that it looks like you're losing and then suddenly you're not. 
but Azul is already prepared with so many attackers in play, so many options, and the B-Roll to counter Roxanne, etc. is prepared to keep the pressure on despite whatever Sander might respond with. And by the time Miltank dares to come back into the active spot, we have that Phoebe lurking. Yeah, you, you even see the flying Pikachu V come down. Does not really care about route right now. We'll take as much damage as possible if it means that we get one step closer to a Phoebe. Takes one more prize, double turbo energy. Wasn't too relevant at the start of the game, but now that we're starting to see Flannery, these crushing hammers trying to make their way, it could be a really clutch means to get a key attack off or... Just discard fodder. Who knows what Azul is going to try to go for here as this game state evolves and Sander maybe gets me closer to the win condition that he's hoping for, uh, even while Azul is putting up such a valiant effort to slow that down as much as possible. Uh, a, a nice card in the hand in that professor's research, but a ton of energies as well right now. So maybe going to see Sander go a little slower here. We see the scoop up net of the Galarian Meowth going to make sure that no boss knockout is available. And we could certainly see these energies, that twin energy uh, provide for the bench later on, or you can just attach it to the active if you so choose and start using route. And yeah, going aggressive, you're going to throw away all of these energies. Get the psychics in the discard for a potential Mewtwo V union. And now with a fresh hand, Sanders going to reevaluate the board state. The next union piece enters the hand. Just need to find a way to discard this. This is Crushing Hammer number three and another Tails. These energies are sticking to Azul's Pokemon. That's a very, very powerful static cling that Pikachu's got going on there. <laughs> We do see the one of the 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 third piece of that Mewtwo V Union hitting the discard pile now, and you can start to see Sander's strategy lining up. Two mill tank in play, one potential Mewtwo V Union, three prize cards left for Azul. Evatel also being brought out. Sander has failed time and time again so far to disrupt these energies outside of Flannery. And with the Evatel's ability to also discard special energy, that could be what Sanders looking for to buy a, just a little bit more time to get over this final hurdle and achieve the control win condition that he has been able to time and time again throughout the NAIC and become such a monstrous threat in the tournament. Well, Sander does not care about attacking in this situation. Just a pass of the turn now. Actually, the, the max balloon actually just prevents any of that happening. Anyways, this is the oh, yeah. stalemate that we see so often from this deck. And Azul is going to try to see if his cards will assist him in this spot. <laughs> so we've got Max Balloon making it so Miltank can't dodge the Pikachu and the Miltank not taking any damage from Pokemon V thanks to that, uh, what is it, Miracle Body, the name of the ability. And... Now it's just a matter of who can find their important tech first to break this stalemate. Marnie, number three, going through for Azul. Marnie Path, the key combo that he said in the interview has been so devastating for his opponents that he's been utilizing in order to get to this point, top four. Looks like Azul has a little more trimming, potentially. The quick ball in hand, so could go a little deeper and then have the beaver roll to fill back up with industrious incisors. We saw an Avery earlier and Azul doesn't really care if the bench gets thinned down. Just going to fail the quick ball. Just as you said, Kyle, relying on those incisors to draw even more cards. Just waiting for the perfect opportunity to get the Phoebe and maybe the pal pad ready to go. Going to just double check. <laughs> The wording here, Miltank's been just frustrating so many players ever since it came out in the new set, and it's just been a fantastic control tool, and it's just the part of a healthy metagame. You want all of your archetypes to uh, see, play, and you talked about it, Kyle. The poison's finally coming through. Yeah, stealth poison on the Crobat VMAX is a great way to provide an awkward amount of pressure onto this mill tank. And we even saw the, the, the reading of the card from Azul, maybe a nod to thinking about a potential paralysis with flying Pikachu in a future <laughs> turn. Just, it really got to go for everything here when everything's on the line against this mill tank deck. 
you now, it's a weird reversal, weird role reversal here, where Azul seems to be the one that's playing towards this slower gameplay, this inevitability. <laughs> I have the wall in the active zone, and now I have a timer ticking down on these mill tanks. If Sander gets a little bit overconfident, says, I can let one of these mill tank go down, Azul can't deal with the second one, that Phoebe can come roaring out and finalizing that last KO, and Sander could find himself with no Pokemon at all. Path of the Peak now hitting the stage. Azul just trying to find some generic ways to clear the hand and keep the <laughs> Beaverill cycling through. Oh, look at that. Beaverill's getting an energy. Could we maybe see the Tail Smash at some <laughs> point? <laughs> tail Smash isn't real. No way. Flip a it, I guess it could happen, right? You know, this is a basic Pokemon, not a Pokemon V, uh, that is, you know, can do some damage and in the right state of affairs, I guess it makes sense. And then it's just gonna go for a coin flip. Always heads, every time, right? Tail smash, that's why they call it that. And the Silene is actually already hitting play. Oh no. A tails and wow. so many tails for Sander was maybe trying to find those crushing hammers, put them back in and uh, you know, just try to disrupt this energy. So Miltank is going to retreat, cleanse that poison, but still retains that three damage counters on it. Oh, we see the big parasol. Look at that. Miltank just has all of the technology here. The big parasol prevent all effects of attacks from your opponent's Pokemon. Now, uh, this was the main tech, of course, to stop like the B drills and whatnot, but it's just uh, the the players just countering each other and countering the counter. Azul just working on so many different lines and win conditions all at once. Well, as I said, when you go up against a deck that's approaching the game from a unique standpoint like this, it forces you to also play the game in a very unique way. This is, I would probably say if you went and interviewed all the players that played against V2V Union. This matchup resulted in some of the oh, oddest no. games I've ever seen. And the Tail Smash does not go through either. This is the game of Tails right now, Kyle. Nobody can flip this coin to save their lives. And missing that opportunity to deal a nice 100 damage to this mill tank could be very devastating. But to be honest, Sander doesn't really have any way to respond to this Bibero. Well, I, I think that Sander's actually holding on to a twin energy right now. That's one of the cards that he held in hand, and we're going to see that team yells cheer now grabbing three of these favorable supporters here. Uh, going to just add a little more to this deck and mm -hmm. potentially find those missing key pieces. Flannery, I think, is certainly one of those, potentially getting rid of that double turbo energy at some point. Yeah, continuously bringing that Flannery back and playing it to disrupt those energies, bringing back the Silene to keep the cycle going, and also bringing a professor's research into the fold, allowing Sander to draw even more cards and work through the deck, even though we're at a nice impasse at this moment, Sander has yet to draw through the rest of the deck and get that infinite loop going. Sharon's care now from Azul. Bibberell is a colorless Pokemon, gonna get scooped back up and healed. Gonna bring it right back down as a Bidoof maybe. And with flying Pikachu VMAX hitting the active spot, is this the moment where Azul is gonna try for that Phoebe? Right, we're going to just see that max balloon and go from Sander now. Doesn't even take a peek at that card that he's drawing. Says, well, I already got my mill tanks. What else do I need? Yeah, just thinking about the overall scope of the matchup. When you're playing a deck like this, Sander, as a control player, is always focused on the bigger picture of the matchup. And with the mill tank in the active, another one on the bench, the Mewtwo V Union not really looking like a strong enough out here. We just have this beautiful Max Balloon. It prevents all damage from, uh, from the Pokemon attacks that are basic of the opponent, and the big Parasol is not going to prevent that. It's Phoebe time. 
This is a card we have not seen in a long time, but sure enough, this is some nice technology here with the ability to just go through this mill tank right now with your VMAX Pokemon. Yes, it's finally time, Kyle. The Phoebe and Pal Pad combo are here. This is what Azul had been buying all that time and waiting for. These cards to be available and set up the double Phoebe to answer both of these mill tank. And Sander, at the very least, can hopefully get some other Pokemon onto the bench. Yeah, that last supporter is the one thing that Azul was really trying to consider. Do I need to maybe work in a Sharon's care if I go for big Bieberal plays on a third mill tank if Silene were to sneak it back in? Mm -hmm. So uh, give yourself every little out potentially that you can find. The Sharon's Care did uh, come in handy, again, to get that Bibarel out of the active spot as well for a free switch, trying to maintain your energy. You know that it's all under fire from Sander's deck with the crushing hammers, with the flanneries, every little bit of energy you need to keep it in play as much as possible. Now we see that energy coming down onto the Crobat V Max, maybe thinking about that Mewtwo V Union potentially rearing its head in some fashion soon trying to get that poison down, right? You're forcing, it's one of the rare things that you can do to force Sander into a different line. Sander is more than happy to maintain this current state and just draw card after card after card, thin through the entire deck, and then go into the infinite loop and beat Azul in this first game through deck out. But with the poison, you can keep that pressure on and Azul closing in with only two prize cards remaining. Sander on the trekking shoes. Gets another Trekking Shoes. Going through the deck, has a Flannery at the very least, another Snorlax. We don't have time to cook. It's just not enough time. As you said, Kyle, Azul's been keeping on consistent pressure, been putting through some janky threats, trying to figure out a way to get through these mill tanks, and now it's starting to pay off, especially thanks to that Phoebe and Palpad. Sander knows that he's on a clock. Yeah, just trying to download as much information as possible from that discard pile now. And you know that Sander is probably feeling an unusual amount of pressure. So many matchups, he said, over the course of the, of the tournament are free, and he was fighting to just play them out. All We're right. just going to bring up the Arceus here. Here is the situation now. We see that the energy is in hand for Azul, but can he thin down tight enough to get to that Phoebe? Double turbo energy attachment for the Not turn. Just going to throw everything away with the professor's research. Seven cards is one of them a Phoebe. Come on, Azul. Don't be such a tease. <laughs> Show us the hand. Uh, we do see it, but that's going to obviously have to wait until the next turn now. We, we do see the poison coming down, and that is a nice play here. Just go ahead, work that in, bring up this huge Pokemon V Max into the active spot, and let the poison do the work for you. Sandra just not finding the right cards right now. Yeah, you've got to bench something if you want to retreat to get rid of this poison. Oh, just going to pass. Just the pass. It ticks up one more turn. Free retreat on the flying Pikachu V Max, and the second Phoebe is found. That is going to be all of Sanders Pokemon knocked out, and Azul takes game one. That was definitely the most wild thing to watch. Trying to work your way through so many awkward scenarios, take all of those prize cards, and uh, having to work through two Miltank, one with the, the big parasol as well, just lost the ability to use those special conditions that were eating away at the Miltank previously, finds the Phoebe, understands exactly what he needs to do to get through the matchup, and played it near flawlessly. The opportunity to see such unique decks go head to head like this and such a big tournament so late into the tournament is a joy. Azul really showing that if you anticipate something that, you know, gave you problems earlier, you can change your deck, make it a little bit more resilient towards those threats and play to the outs. The Marnie cycling was really the key, I think, to put Azul in that winning position. He slowed Sander down so much. Every time there was a Gorman dies, no, Marnie, put those cards right back into the deck. Sander never got to that point where he could efficiently get those supporter cards over and over and over again and actually threaten any of Azul's setup.
This has to be frustrating for Sander because, uh, and, and at some point, Azul did certainly tech for a matchup like this and mm -hmm. having the Phoebe as an answer for the mill tank. But a lot of these techs are inadvertent. The Crobat VMAX <laughs> is ridiculous. Getting that poison damage in and then just also having the ability to knock out a Mewtwo V Union due to the dark weakness. So there's so many awkward scenarios that Sander has to avoid and Azul has just the right amount of cards if he starts with that aggressive, uh, the aggressive play that he did in game one. He was so confident in this deck's ability to counter Palkia, and he's just like, but wait, I counter something else that's <laughs> that's just beating everyone else by accident. It's truly the galaxy brain ascendance that you love to see from a, a fan favorite player like Azul. But of course, I love it when a player can innovate in such a strong fashion to bring a deck that was on absolutely no one's radar and just take a tournament by storm like this. You know that Sander is certainly proud of what he was able to demonstrate straight today and we still have potentially two more games to go with the right draw sander could very easily get through the deck before azul is able to stop him this time well he is not taking any time off here immediately half of that mewtwo v union straight into the discard pile by way of the ultra ball we did see one additional piece in those prize cards so certainly gonna have to see that peonia at some point to help out but this hand is absolutely going off multiple quick ball the snorlax in hand and a twin to retreat quick ball discarding the quick ball what do you think he wants to find here just the snorlax do, you, do we need a scoop up net we need something to get this meowth out of the way maybe he doesn't have it decides on the mill tank instead just want to get this get this down maybe try going for routes getting some damage onto the pikachu v before that max balloon starts to hit i got news that hand has it all he's got the energy he's got the snorlax and uh he could could certainly just start to go straight through the deck right now and that seems to be the line gorman die is going to fill this hand right back up to seven Ah, uh, yeah, had the attach into the retreat there for the Meowth to get it out of the active. Double Turbo Energy, you know, it's used to kind of squeeze out these three energy attacks just one turn early, but it's such a beautiful way to make these two retreat cost Pokemon a lot more usable if you don't want to try to run Air Balloon in your deck. Well, Azul doesn't need much. Finds Bidoof, which is a lovely card to have in the opening hand. That energy attachment to the Argus is perfect. And a free retreater in the active spot. A clean pass of the turn and has the Ultra Ball follow up on the second turn to pop off. Azul saw when the game played out in game one, how much time he really had to get set up. He's not worried at all. Even with these two Mewtwo V Union pieces hitting the discard pile, I think that he might still be confident that he has plenty of time to set up here. Sander has a lot of draw, but as soon as you go for Gormandize for that big draw, your turn is going to end. So even if you get those Mewtwo V Union pieces, you aren't going to be able to make use of them right away. We see Sander continuing to uh, rack up cards in this hand. Trekking Shoe is going to maybe add a little more. Tool Jammer being sent to the discard pile. One more draw instead. Mill Tank on the bench. And now another Snorlax. So many cards developed here. Sanders got a strong foundation, but needs to keep drawing. Azul, ironically, is the one that maybe has Sander on a clock here. This, this might be one of the most, the least threatening boards I've ever <laughs> seen in top four. <laughs> but, uh, but if you know what's happening, if you know, you know, and this is, this is scary, uh, we are going to see the mill tank pass. Yeah, just a scoop up net to get the Snorlax out of the active. Putting the mill tank down means that Sander re recognizes because of the Marnie, the Gormandize isn't going to be that viable of a line to get to the bottom of my deck, get to that zero cards in deck with condition, and it's just going to be up to mill tank to hold the fort for now. I wonder if Sander is maybe going to try to pivot to Mewtwo V Union to try a different strategy for this game too. Well, this is this is just a nice play to avoid giving prize cards to your mm -hmm. opponent. You know that this turn always ends with an Arceus attacking you in the face and trying to take a prize. So go ahead and try to get some denial there. Make your opponent have to have multiple bosses orders and uh, use that pal pad. Maybe you don't see a double Phoebe in a situation like this. Just try to get them uh, a little off put with the prize exchange. Yeah, Mill Tank being presented so early in the game really changes the way Azul has to approach this matchup. Oh, Just, yeah, we already see that nod with the uh, the V Star ability going to go ahead and grab the double turbo and the boss's orders. So plus one for Xander being able to pull that boss out of the deck from Azul. 
Getting that resource out early is so important. If you can force Azul to spend so many important cards on dealing with just the first threat, the second threat, and the third threat are there to end the game. Uh, I remember when I talked to Mace, he said that mill tank number three is the true win condition of the deck sometimes. Hey, there, is, there isn't even a mill tank number three, <laughs> but of course with Silene you sneak it back in and it really is the case. Just being able to, to use all of these cards to their fullest uh, extent in the right matchup is what this deck is all about. Flying Pikachu V now loaded up with those lightning energies. Now we just need the V Max, and then we're going to have that standoff once more between Mill Tank and the Max Balloon. This will not get into any of those energy cards in the prizes. The three of them near the top is certainly going to be awkward when trying to get some additional attackers like that Crobat that we saw earlier. And now we see that Flannery going to remove the double turbo energy. And with the Pukumuku, which was in the prizes on turn in game one, Sander has the option to get a little bit more card draw, a little bit more cycling. And with the Flannery hitting the Arceus V, it might get stranded in the active if Azul doesn't have that extra energy. We're, and now as we head into game two, Sander has the chance to maybe reverse the curse and start hitting heads on those crushing hammers. This is a, a much more scary game from Sander, just having the mill tanks and having a, a lot of the, the pressure right now, being able to cycle these supporter cards that are really starting to have an impact now, getting a, a hand of a relative size and then starting to just take away piece by piece at every resource that Azul has. And Azul now with the draw for his turn is going to try to find a way to get the resources he needs. And there is the Marnie, still beautifully timed. Sander, even without the Gormandize, was working on a pretty big hand. Some important resources, obviously. Going to draw to four. Azul up to five. Let's take a look at what he's got. I would love to see some industrious incisors. And there it is. Right in the window is going to be a nice little find, the Evolution Incense 2, to go and find that Flying Pikachu V Max. Beautiful. The, you can't ask for much more. Flying Pikachu V Max was the key. It had a little bit of pressure thanks to the Phoebe, was able to stall a bunch of turns using the Max Balloon in the active spot, but actually reconsiders. Yeah, I think there's an Ultra Ball, so just ah. to, uh, thinking about thinning down a little more and not going to need all of those uh, extra Arceus pieces. Nice little find there in Azul just to, to, to get some extra cards off the industry synthesizers. Yeah, just that extra efficiency is these micro decisions that really, uh, you know, are the difference between the top eights and the top fours, the day ones and the day twos. Azul just going for the thinning is winning mindset here for sure. Yeah, he's playing like a day three right now. This is, <laughs> this is some pretty great gameplay right now. Bieberolt does come down. Obviously, one of the main attackers in Azul's deck to get him to this point here. Has the Phoebe in hand. One of the pieces now collected. Just passes back. Needs to get one more uh, way into the hand to get this Arceus out of the active spot. And then try to take down this mill tank. Azul might not pull the trigger on this Phoebe until he also has the PAL pad ready to go. We'll see if Sander is going to have enough time with this Crushing Hammer. And it's another Tails. He is not Crushing Hammer heads. number two. That Tails. That is ridiculous. We have seen more Tails with you and I casting, I think, than ever before. When, especially when the pressure is on. Sander cannot get this card to work. It's unreal, especially with the amount of lightning or just energy in the disc in the in the prize cards alone. This would impact Azul's board so much if any of these were to fall. But in, no, we can't see any impact right now. And Sander just has to continue to use his energies as a way to retreat. And he's trying to build back a hand with this Snorlax right now. Gets the Gorman dies and has to pass away the turn over to Azul. You need to just keep drawing. Now, we're, Sander's looking for ways just to put these crushing hammers back into the deck and maybe use them, try to find that Flannery, shut this down. If those crushing hammers went off, it'd be very difficult to keep the Arceus stranded, but Azul has the switch. Now, Flying Pikachu is in the active against the Snorlax. This is going to be another prize for him. Yeah, Max Balloon going to probably be the end of this Snorlax, and Azul never going to take a turn off 
always trying to burn more and more cards there. The quick ball comes down. Research, not a card that you want to be playing when you have to preserve all of these resources. Instead, mm -hmm. just let the incisors do the work. And now that Azul has the Phoebe in hand, is maybe looking for the pow pad to set up that combo that we saw in the first game. This is going to make it a little bit awkward if Azul feels that he's under enough pressure and needs to go for a second Marnie and undo that progress. But a second prize is taken nonetheless. And Sander, after that Gorman dies, has a chance to get some modicum of tempo, some sort of threat, some sort of agency in this game. Oh, gonna check hand size. Eyeing up potential Sydney plays. Sydney. Your opponent reveals their hand, you discard two cards. So it's not too shabby. You get rid of the special energy. Stadium cards as well. Path to the Peak is gone. Oh no, not my path. <laughs> Just thin down for my beaver roll, why don't you? <laughs> exactly. The industrious incisors. That one, is it a 1-1 one, one line or is he on 2-2? Two, two? I, I can't recall. The beaver roll? Yeah. That's a 2-2. Two, 2-2 two. Two, two line. You know that he's been really valuing this technology, especially with the advent of Roxanne in the metagame. The, having that emergency play of having just a few more draws to get out of that Roxanne prison. Here comes Phoebe number one, making it so that flying Pikachu VMAX will be unaffected by the Miracle Body. Gonna go for Dark Asset first, of course, after everything is thinned down, drawn back up to six. Yeah, when you play down this Crobat V, you'd also love to have energy to go along with it. Maybe you can start threatening some of that poison before you see uh, a card like Big Parasol. And Silene tried to do Tails? something. Are you kidding? No way. No. Oh Finally. my God, a heads. One for nine? <laughs> what are, what are we looking at count. here? I lost count. I lost count. I'm just honestly so glad that wasn't a, that wasn't a Tails. We, we can't let it go down like this, Kyle. That's we we got to send our energy into this die just so we can have a real game here. And number two, Sander now maybe breathing a sigh of relief is feeling the tides changing in his favor. There's the discard with the Ultra Ball to get that Mewtwo V Union into the discard pile. Did we go for Miltank number three? <laughs> that is certainly one of those winning routes in this matchup. Yeah, forcing Azul to have that extra little bit of, you know, resources to find its way through a third mill tank is a very tall order that a lot of decks can struggle to do. And that is going to be snagged here with the quick ball. And Sander just thinking about the matchup at hand, thinking about the board state, going for the shuffle here, just a little bit more, and Azul is going to shuffle as well. Yeah, Rose Tower, really cute here. Just get some extra cards, runs into a trekking shoes. Maybe we can mm. start to see some of these energies. I, mean, I know a ton are in the discard pile already, just trying to survive the early stages of the game. Hukumuku also being cycled with its pitch ability, going to the bottom of the deck and drawing a scoop up net from this position. Sander can just, uh, you know, scoop up this Meowth like we saw in game one and then go into this double mill tank idea, taking another target off of the bench that Azul could potentially target down. Another draw for Azul, another chance at closing out this second game. Max Balloon. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is where we are at. It is going to be nice and slow. Uh, Sander is going to bring up that boss in an attempt to slow things down. Oh, the pal pad. pad. The pal pad is found. Azul did get one energy off of the prizes. Is thinking about the other supporter that he wants to put down. Here it is, pal pad for the Phoebe and the Marnie being revealed to the opponent and shuffled into the deck. Yep. Now we just have to wait and see how long it's going to take for these cards to come back to Azul. Yeah, the Marnie is a nice grab. Maybe you can put Sander on a weird hand where he just doesn't find a big parasol at any point. And then you can start working in that poison damage on one of the final mill tank. 
or you can just go straight for the Bieber roll. Oh, the Bieber roll. <laughs> I mean, if this Arceus gets a little bit more love in the energy department, it certainly could go for that attachment. As well as plenty of time, right? This is a slow matchup where you can just manually attach three energy if you feel like Sander is in an awkward spot. Those crushing hammers, as we can see, are still in the discard pile, have not been cycled back into the deck to be redrawn. So maybe Azul thinks that the energy is safe for now. Oh, taking a peek at the list right now and three basic darkness energies. We know that two are the top rise cards right now and one is sitting on an Arceus. So poison at least not going to be an option for this Crobat. Ah, that is a devastating uh, revelation. Not having the poison means that's going to be one of these cheeky avenues that Azul was using to pressure the mill tank is going to be unavailable because at the top of the prizes, the game is going to come down to, you know, three, two, one prize left and you can't get there. Crushing Hammer went off screen, but it must have been a tail. He's thinking about Wait, something. Oh. Yeah, this is good. Okay. Finally, second heads. Woo. Sanders on a roll. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> All right. It's the luck is changing here. If these crushing hammers can keep hitting. It's going to be very difficult for Azul to keep up the pressure. Pukamuku also being cycled for one more draw finds the twin energy here. Trekking shoes. It's a good one. It's a keep. Looking through the, look at this discard pile. Wait, which one is the deck? This pile is so big. Sander slowly but surely closing in on that forbidden Silene loop. Ooh, and we see the big parasol. Can we just hold on to that until we see that Phoebe come down to take one of these mill tank? And we're going to see Silene going again. Are you kidding? He's on a roll. Oh man, it went off screen. Heads. Wow. When the chips are down in game two, Sander changes his fate and chooses a new destiny, is now starting to get these heads consistently. And Silene gonna find these important pieces, put them back in the deck. Because it has been thinned so thoroughly, it's going to be only a turn or two before these enter the hand and he can employ them once more to keep Azul GG under control. A big W in chat for production, catching that last flip. That was huge. And the pal pad, the crushing hammer also being found, put back into the deck from the Silene, back over to Azul. He can start feeling the pressure now. He knows that the window of opportunity that he was presented with is closing. Going to look through the discard pile, make absolutely sure that he is aware of everything going on in this situation, but has to pass, doesn't have the resources yet. Palpad off the top, going to put Silene and Team Yells cheer down. The deck is thinned just enough that we're going to start seeing that crushing hammer rear its ugly head over and over again. And the way that Sanders has been piloting this, you know that multitudes of coin flips for heads are coming down the pipeline. Yes, Silene, Another pass. Silene is the, the big way to continue this chain. All you need is one heads on a pal pad, and that will continue to get that team yells cheer, which then goes and grabs more Silene. And he goes infinite forever, even with a five card deck. He can do this for 300 turns or so <laughs> if, his, if he just keeps getting heads every once in a while. And Peonia now manipulating the prizes here, and this is a deck that again, uses those prize cards as sort of a second hand. Just going to put the scoop up nets in there. You don't need them. Has this crushing hammer now. Wow. And there's the heads. Another energy gone from the flying Pikachu VMAX. And we said it before, Kyle, with those energies in the prize cards, Azul's going to struggle to keep these Pokemon energized. Passes back to Sander, and it looks like he is slowly but surely climbing into a dominant position in this game. There's the pass back. Azul slowly drawing through the rest of the deck. Look at this massive hand. There's nothing he can do just yet. Another pass, another Silene draw from Sanders. A Tails, we just need one more heads. And it Ooh. is a Tails. The Silene fails when everything looked like it was going into Sanders' favor. Azul with the draw, has to pass back. So much riding on all of these dice oh, rolls. No. Another Tails. It's getting away from Sanders, slowly swinging back into Azul's territory, perhaps. A draw of the Avery. Three more draws from the top of the deck. 
has the Pukimuku, has a, oh my goodness, I don't even know what he can go for here, just trying to facilitate this infinite loop. The deck is almost fin uh, thin through here. And uh, Azul over there with his 20 card hand gonna just have to keep <laughs> passing. There are definitely levels to this game right now. Maybe Azul already understands that this is one of those unwinnable states, but you have to think about it. Heads, tails, can still find one more card to put back. It's the pal pad. You have to start thinking about the time aspect. This is something that Azul would like to play into because he understands that if he gets into a game three, he's going to be the one who can take prize cards. And if we ever found wacky sudden death scenarios, he likes taking prizes. Phoebe still in the hand, but now we need energy to somehow find its way back onto these Pokemon so they can attack. So many cards available to Azul, but it doesn't matter how many cards you have when you don't have that missing piece to convert. The deck's so thin, Sander gets that pal pad immediately. Thinking about how he wants to navigate this turn now that things are coming down to the wire here. Yeah, identifies the threat, that beaver roll. No energies have come down in a minute, but if you can just remove this from play, you really can reduce all of the attack options from Azul here. Just the route. We do have Sharon's care. Going to scoop up this Bibaro. We saw this in the first game. Just going to reset it. Now Flying Pikachu is back in the active, but no energy to use the Max Balloon. Pidoof hitting the bench, prepared to evolve the next turn. Team yells cheer. This is the sequence that Sander has been going for time and time again, and finally the loop is achieved. Yes, strong identification there from Azul and understanding that this is a great turn to replay that Bidoof as you just saw your opponent play boss's orders, not going to be able to directly play that back into the deck and then on the same turn. So you can go ahead and get that Bidoof down now and then have the beaver roll with the extra hit points too. The double turbo energy onto the Pikachu and the Phoebe. Gonna be able to find that knockout right when it looked like he was almost out of energy, able to take one more prize, but the final two darkness energy are at the very tippy top. Oh no, well, the big parasol still hanging out, but that will be the last of Phoebe. We have seen the pal pad already. This Phoebe has been used twice. This is mill tank number three, and it is going to try to make one last stand. Yeah, Azul was hoping that one of those draws from the prize cards is going to be that darkness energy, still trying to think about this poison here. But Miltank now in the active, the final hurdle. Bidoof comes up to the active spot and Route takes it down before it can evolve. Yeah, Azul chose not to evolve the Bidoof there and uh, that just falls right into Sanders' play of taking an easy knockout there and potentially avoiding an, uh, one of these attackers. Yep, and the Pikachu VMAX does still have the energy on it, goes for the Max Balloon thinking about, is there any way I can get through this mill tank? Silene, tails, Silene, heads, can get another card and put it back in. The sequence is live, pal pad, going back into this very thin deck, and this will then become two more supporters. Yeah, there's a pal pad in hand as Ooh, well, I think. So Sander opts for the greedy. crushing hammer. Flips for flips, my guy. Azul drawing through the deck, about to deck out in just a few turns. There's the draw of the crushing hammer. We see the flannery. Do we already see the, uh, the crushing hammer in combination? The flannery discards the special energy. Pal pad putting the Silene back in, of course, and the team yells cheer. The sequence that Sander is, basically it's in his muscle memory now. He knows exactly what cards he needs to put right back into the deck and continuously cycle these effects. So he'll draws the double turbo energy, does have a way to get another max balloon off at the very least, but is that really the line he feels he can go for? Passes back, Sander with the Silene, gonna try for a heads and Another heads allows for a pal pad and one other card of his choosing to go right back on top of the deck. Oh, well, it has to be mill tank number four. Mill tank number four back from the discard pile, back 
into the land of the living. <laughs> Another threat for Azul to overcome. He has two prizes left to take, but these are the heaviest prizes that any player has ever had to take before in a tournament. From this point, I don't know if Azul does have anything left. Going to promote the Arceus V into the active spot at the very least. Miltank back onto the bench. Peonia to reach into Sanders' secret second hand over here in the prize cards. <laughs> get to look at three prizes. Uh, get to look at the prizes, put three cards from your hand and replace them. Sander now swapping out, getting the scoop up nets. Yeah, the route is on. Just keep continuing to add damage to the other side. There is a little bit of a, uh, a, a double-edged sword here, potentially. If you take too many prize cards, then you give uh, Azul a way to shuffle in that Roxanne. Oh, so yeah. something to think about <laughs> if you want to avoid 30 more turns. Oh, my goodness. Could you imagine? Bidoof, it, you said it was a 2-2 line. Another chance for a Bibarel to come out here. Find another attacker. It goes for Evolution Incense. Looking at the deck, seeing what's left. See a flying Pikachu. It's not looking too good here in game number two. Sander might have been able to close in on finally the win condition he was after. Yeah, we see that uh, Sharon's Care is in there right now. Maybe that's one way to avoid giving some additional prizes if Azul wants to keep this game pushing. And uh, sure enough, we do see that Marnie now. So. Shuffling that hand that is a deck to the bottom <laughs> of the deck. Just keep on shuffling. When a player, if you find a card game player and you put that many cards in their hand, they're going to shuffle them. They just can't help themselves, Kyle. <laughs> it's also a requirement of the card. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now... Just now, everything that was in the hand back in the deck, Azul just buying himself enough turns here. And the shuffle back in with the Team Yells cheer. Sander has this very consistent pile of powerful cards that can be drawn turn after turn. And now the Pukimuku with the pitch here goes to the bottom of the deck. You draw one card. A little bit more damage with Route. It's starting to build up here. Azul thinking if this is the right amount, if this is the right time for Sharon's care. Yeah, the damage we're at 170 right now. So if you wanted to wait one more turn, you certainly could. And that seems to be the line for Azul. Just go ahead and make the most use out of this. Silene flipping heads again. Two heads. heads. Let's go. Two sixes, baby. Silene going to find two cards here from the discard pile and put them right back on top of the deck. Eyeballs that crushing hammer. Yeah, I was wondering if another energy was going to start coming up at this point. Sander could certainly start working on another mill tank and just having an additional attacker here, y you have to think you'd be able to close from that point. That way, if there is anything that forces this, mil this first mill tank out of the active, you're going to have another attacker ready to go. Another route, this Arceus V taking a beating in the active spot. Can't really do much with not any energy available. And there is the Sharon's Care. This means this darkness energy that is attached to the Arceus will go back to Azul's hand as well. And I wonder if the reattach can happen at some point. Yeah, we see the capture in hand, a double turbo in hand. So maybe Crobat could start to work on some plays soon enough. But we're just going to see that max balloon now. And... Try to work in that stalemate. And there's the pass, a draw of a lightning energy. But we need some other way to get through this mill tank, unfortunately. And because Azul has two prizes remaining, it's not just this first mill tank that needs to go down. It's the next one that needs to go down as well. Crushing Hammer finds a Tails. Not going to be able to discard the energy this time around. But Silene is going to put that right back on top. Heads and Tails. What is the one card that Sander wants? Yeah, immediately brings the Flannery up to the top, and that's going to be a real nice way to remove that double turbo energy. Slow down this flying Pikachu. Azul understands the situation and says, well, I'm going to try to attack next turn. Yep, and there it is, the Flannery again right off the top, thanks to Silene. Takes away the double turbo energy, the darkness energy from the Arceus. 
and the Sharon's Care being reattached to the Flying Pikachu VMAX. Max Balloon still keeps popping off and buying Azul turn after turn here. Yeah, doing this with three basic energies is exactly where Azul wants to be. It's so much more difficult for Sander to find the Silene flip enough heads to bring in Crushing Hammers and not also deck out, and then also flip heads on the Crushing Hammers. So mm -hmm. uh, in, with Flannery, so much more uh, easier of a combo. Palpad finds once again the Silene and the Team Yells Cheer, putting those back in, down to two cards, now back up to four. And we have the potential for Sanders to try to go for another lockdown play, with the Flannery and the Crushing Hammer being revealed here. Crushing Hammer. Rolls ahead. Oh, that's such a big flip. I think that Azul is down to just special energies from this point. Just keeps drawing cards. No more Max Balloon to buy time. Looks like Bibaro might actually go down to this route. Silene now with the heads. And the other one ahead. Wow. Sander not afraid to put some oomph into these dice. They keep rolling way off to the side. <laughs> so now Palpad is grabbed and one more option just going to take an, a chance to consider what supporters from the pal pad are also going to go back into the deck yeah sander probably knows azul's list uh, it hasn't changed terribly too much from milwaukee mm. where uh, azul was able to get a 10th place finish so might understand that there's a few more dark energies floating around in this deck may not know that they're sitting at the top two prize cards however and so with the big discard pile being given back to Azul, Sander Woo! is locked into the play that he wants to make here. Crushing Hammer also put back on top of the deck with the Silene. B uh, Bibero goes down. Flying Pikachu hits the active spot now once more. Wow, what a nice card to find whenever Pokemon gets knocked out. Lightning energy can fly right back up, and that was something that Sander was targeting right there, trying to remove all of these lightning energies. Now with Raihan, the energy attachment from the discard pile can look through the remainder of what little deck there is to find one more card of his choosing. Almost able to get away from the max balloon and that one lightning in the attack cost. So yeah. I have to take a card. <laughs> I'll, uh... Yeah, that's true. You, you can't you can't choose not to. So he just has to think which card do I even want to put in my hand here. Yeah, e energy or a way to shuffle back this hand seem like strong plays. Just continue to to buy as much time as you can. And so with the max balloon, heads. Ooh. That energy that was valiantly recovered by the Raihan goes right back into the discard pile and it's back over to Azul. Running out of options here. Finds the capture energy. Is still able to keep chaining these max balloons, getting turn after turn to still think of a win condition, just eating up the timer here. And this is what Sander wants, right? This is what Sander expects, even when the games are going directly in his favor. He knows that they're going to go to time. It takes so long to grind your opponent out. Yeah, he likes that when he wins the first game. <laughs> it's a little more difficult when you're, when you're fighting to, to win a prize exchange with this deck, and then you know that you have an inevitable game three on your hands against a deck that's pretty aggressive. I wonder if Azul can replicate that really amazing game one showing, but Sanders just recognizing that I can be a little bit more aggressive with these mill tank at the start of the game. Team Yell Cheer coming off the top thanks to Silene. Gonna find a Silene and a Flannery and Silene number two to shuffle back into the deck. This incredibly thinned, consistent engine is Sort of a dream for a lot of Pokemon players, right? You, you think about consistency and searching through your deck through the cards you need, but what if your deck was just made up entirely of the cards that you needed? Pretty good, right? <laughs> Xylene, indeed. The Tails, and two Tails in a row, finally, but that is only the first Silene of two. If that is one way for this engine to fail is you just miss a lot of heads on that Silene over and over again. Palpat has to come back down, grab Silenes, and you have to keep on trying. 
Players just in this stalemate now. Sander using an ultra ball and trying not to deck out from an opponent's Marnie. Just <laughs> counts and says, well, I, got, uh, I got six, so that's fine. Right, and then the Pukimuku has the Flannery to get rid of that capture energy. The double turbo, pardon me. So now Pikachu unable to use the max balloon once again. Palpad puts the Flannery and the Silene back into the deck. So there is going to be enough cards here to resist the Marnie. And there's the draw. Azul for the second time building up a monstrously big hand. It's already dwarfing the deck here. The discard pile also huge. And so now Sander just slowly routing on this Pikachu VMAX. Route doing 20 more damage for each of your opponent's benched Pokemon. Azul only has one benched Pokemon, just trying to limit that damage by himself as much time as possible. Tails and went off the table. <laughs> Double Tails on the second Silene. Oh, this is getting awkward. Forcing the repetition of that combo over and over again has ended up becoming very awkward. Sander can still put these back in with the team yells, cheers. That's still in the hand. I've, I've completely lost track. I'm in the twilight zone right now, Kyle. <laughs> We're stuck in just this time loop. The player's going back and forth, drawing cards. Zul with the rock sand that he can't use just yet. Yeah, Sander's down to, I believe, just five accessible cards right now. And... Uh, I'm, I'm sure that some of them will start to continue this chain. It's just depending on if he's ever going to get another heads to keep it moving. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the players are understanding how much is riding on these last handful of turns, right? When Sander has thinned the deck down so much, is on the precipice of almost decking out and is relying on this combo. Azul is basically needing to catch up to Sanders' understanding of the list and find a way to potentially disrupt this. But the Team Yells Cheer gets a Flannery, a Boss's Orders, and the Silene. So that's going to go into the deck now. And with that Boss's Orders, uh, Sanders looking to maybe find a knockout elsewhere, maybe try to strand something. Another route onto the Flying Pikachu VMAX. This is still a VMAX Pokemon. It still has a lot of HP to eat through. Well, Azul is holding out, and we see that the Flying Pikachu VMAX is taking a ton of damage throughout this process. Let's tails. Pause, pause for Silene Flips. And Tails. Oh, that is six in a row. That is not good. Uh, and we see the damage starting to compile, and honestly, I think Azul is okay with this Pokemon potentially falling, because that means that a Crobat V Max could start to work its way into the active spot if he ever wanted to just pass for 30 turns. But we're going <laughs> to see the Flying Pikachu V come out, and that takes a little extra uh, damage here now with the 50 coming down from the route. Yeah, with more Pokemon on the bench, Pikimuku now with the pitch goes down to the bottom, and Silene is the final card. Heads and tails. Yeah. Okay, so that's what we needed. Palpad is still able to be found and put back into the deck. Another route onto the flying Pikachu. Yeah, not sure about the rest of the count, but if you miss eight flips, I think that's where it starts to get awkward and finds the seventh. Things were about to go really dire for Sander, but now being able to put that pal pad in, the cycle begins anew. We've got Silene and Team Yells Cheer. Azul down to two cards left in the deck, draws and passes back. Sander with the pitch, draws, finds the Team Yells Cheer, I believe it was. Another route. Azul down to one card left in the deck. Passes. Down to just under 10 minutes in this top four match. Heads. And heads. Ooh. So Sander bringing it back from the brink here with some heads flips. Picks up the twin energy and the pal pad to put these back in. There we go. Top of the deck in any order. There are so many die on the field right now. Crobat VMAX evolving onto the bench and the Marnie, of course, from Azul, shuffling your hand back into your deck. Your hand becomes your deck in Azul's case. 
Yeah, choosing to play down the Crobat VMAX and not keep it as an additional card in the deck. So maybe eyeing up a plan with that Crobat understands that those hit points are going to be valuable here in buying some additional turns and doesn't want to take a risk of not finding it in, the, in perhaps the bottom of the deck. It's been a long competition here in NAIC. These players have fought through some of the toughest challenges, the toughest players that we've ever seen play this game. And now when it's, it's time! Mewtwo v Union! Let's go! We finally saw the energy coming up from the Silene, and that means that these energies are going to make their way onto the board by way of Union gain. Mewtwo v Union, not threatened by this Crobat VMAX. Recognizing there is no darkness energy, after enough damage has been compiled via route onto these Mewtwo VMAX, we could see the, uh, the Psychic spread damage come through. 16 damage counters spread onto your opponent's Pokemon. Has to pass, the mill tank is There's still stranded in the net. office. Scoop up net, brings the Mewtwo V Union back into the active. Oh, let's it's go to math class. I think this is gonna be a, a, a lot of damage. We have the 16, we have Size six to the active, seven to the back. I think that will clear all of these Pikachu V Max from play. And that is going to be a great way to close out game two. Sander taking the remaining four prize cards all at once. Azul was not able to get there here in game two. It grinded down to this crazy stalemate, this time loop where we were stuck in limbo and suddenly comes crashing through with the Mewtwo V Union. I, yeah, Azul just showing the two darkness energies and Sanders yeah. like, yeah, I, th I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of pieced it together when you marnied your 30 card hand a few times. And Mewtwo comes down and just ends the game. This wasn't another grind of, a, of him just using that healing ability, out damaging, out healing Azul's damage, came through and immediately wreaked destruction on those flying Pikachu VMAX. They're just soaring daintily, gently through the air, having a good fun time and this big bad Mewtwo comes soaring through the clouds and tears them asunder. We're gonna get a game three here, folks, in the top four of NAIC. Yeah, this is where it gets crazy. Sander is going to have six, maybe five minutes to really set up a strong board and try to avoid giving prize cards to Azul Garcia Griego because the time rules are certainly going to come into effect here. Yeah, whoever is ahead in prizes will win if the game is tied after that third turn when the time is called. Azul is playing a deck that can take those prize cards early, so Sander is in a position where he can't risk perhaps going for those early Snorlaxes, just has to hope that he draws immediately into a double mill tank. Yeah. Uh, having that mill tank and that twin energy are going to be big for Sander. Maybe get one turn of Gormandize and then try to use those scoop up nets and bring those Pokemon back up into your hand. Do not provide them as some outs for Azul to draw prize cards because you are going to need to find your route to victory in that mill tank. And on Azul's part, he's got to get an attacker charged up, either an Arceus V Star or a Flying Pikachu V Max, and then draw that Phoebe and try to get a key knockout on a mill tank. I wonder if that is how this game three is gonna play out. Mill tank set up for Sander having the most consistent walling effect in his deck against Azul, and Azul having to go all in on whether he can get attacker and a Phoebe fast enough. The opening cards are being drawn, looking for their basics. Sander taking a mulligan as these control decks are wont to do. And Azul drawing, drawing, drawing. Finds a basic. Azul. And that. Yeah, Azul ready to go ahead and give us those prize cards. Phoebe! Oh, are no! you kidding me? Stop. At the top of the prize is no less. I could see it at the bottom. Maybe he can t he can sneak in a KO on a Snorlax. Maybe snipe a Meowth. But Phoebe at the top means that he's going to have to run an entire gauntlet. And Sander's not going to let him draw. It's the final prize. This is the most important draw of Sander's life. He needs to find Miltink. 
and it is the starting Pokemon. Are you kidding me? Miltank we is are in going the active. to have a crazy game three. Arceus sets up. If Azul looks through the deck and recognizes the Phoebe is missing, he's going to have to start scrambling for Crobat VMAX to get the poison down on the Miltanks? This is absurd. Azul going first, has the double turbo energy attachment and passes. Quick Ball gets rid of Mewtwo V Union Peace. Already in game three, the pieces are falling into place. It seems like the matchup is set in stone, but can these players change their destiny? Well, it, it has to be about 22 routes <laughs> if Azul plays this as potentially intended. Well, we are going to see the benching plays. Sander uh, thinking that this is going to be the best way to get the ball rolling. Of course, doesn't know that there are the, the, that Phoebe is going to be in the prize cards. Crushing Hammer coming down. Heads, double turbo, gone. Trying to deny that Trinity Nova. We do see energy in hand. That is going to the mill tank. Tool Jammer attack, pass. Arceus left alone in the active spot. Zul has a Marnie, reattaches the second double turbo here, and now the Marnie needs to look through the deck, trying to find something else to bench, something to pivot to. But no attack gonna come out of the Arceus just yet. Yeah, this is certainly a susceptible draw now. Uh, Azul would love to find a way to search a Pokemon and does find a Quick Ball. Also, we do see that Flying Pikachu, so we'll be able to accelerate these energies onto the Flying Pikachu V right now. But I don't think the rest of the hand was very strong. Doesn't have access to an Arceus V-Star on the following turn. Yeah, it just goes for the Trinity Charge. Deals no damage, but at the very least gets the energies onto these benched Pokemon. Azul also going to take this time to study the deck. Can see the Phoebe's missing. Well, shucks, we need that. <laughs> <laughs> and now with the time ticking down, both players are in this, you know, breakneck speed where they're taking their turns almost simultaneously. There's the energy attachment. One darkness energy, two lightning energy onto the flying Pikachu V. Miltank still in the active, but there are two fresh targets with the Snorlax on the bench. Maybe Azul can still get there. Yeah, the, the top decks need to be live for Azul if I read the hand correctly. Trekking shoes, Sander. And Sander's deck is all top decking. It's all about drawing the cards as quickly as possible. Avery to draw three more. The likelihood of having the tools that he needs is much more in Sander's favor. Scoop up net, pulls the mill tank, puts out the Gorman dies. Yeah, this is a big hand right now. Going to try to slim it down a little bit with an Ultra Ball. This is going to be a game that's decided within one or two prize cards. Azul has some key targets in play on Sander's side, but has to find a way to get this Flying Pikachu V into the active and get it evolved and take down this Snorlax. Yeah, I missed that there was the uh, the Quick Ball, of course, that could grab the Crobat on the following turn for Azul. So if that is in deck, that will be an option to continue to draw a little deeper. Sanders is shuffling the deck now, taking a big risk here, not going for just a solo mill tank. Puts the Snorlaxes down, still committing to his normal game plan, his standard win condition, fully fills up the bench, trying to power up uh, some sort of game plan. The Gorman dies, still going to draw him back up to seven from this empty hand. Yeah, this is where you want to be getting this big hand, but unfortunately, with the way that the time rules are going to work, potentially could be losing a prize here in this Snorlax. Seven cards over to Azul. When was time called? Who's zero? That was so close, it was right on the border. We'll have to get official word. We do see that quick ball, and surely you have to think that Azul is going to try to dig deeper in this deck. Finds the Crobat V, trying to get this extra attacker online, having access to that Venomous Fang, potentially. Oh, this is so down to the wire. I'm speechless. Game three, one of the zaniest matchups we've ever seen here in the top four, going all the way to a game three. We're getting word now that Azul is turn zero. An energy attachment to the Arceus, just looking for an evolution here. Ultra Ball is off the top. Double B-barrel. 
Ultra Ball gonna find a Pokemon of Azul's choice. Discarding two cards can get that evolution after all. Just thinking, agonizing over what should be discarded at this point. Ultra Ball goes a searching, and there's the Arceus V Star. Yeah, that is going to be very nice here. A prize card all but sealed now for Azul. And it has plenty of time now. This is turn zero. You have access to a Beebrel and can shuffle with that Marnie now. Maybe put Sander on a worse hand and make it impossible to find a potential prize card. Yep, so just going to draw here, has the path to the peak, boss's orders, really great pickup here to maybe get a second prize if the game calls for it. And there is the Trinity Nova. Azul going to take one prize card here in game three. It looks like the timer and the rule set in his favor. Miltank needs to try to find a KO to even this up. The bench is pretty full. The route can do enough damage. Does Sander have the boss's orders to maybe bring up this Bibberol? It's asking a lot of the deck right now. You can take a peek at the hand. We see the Rose Tower, a scoop up net, and Kukumuku. Kukumuku. You can pitch that and maybe draw into a piece. Really just looking for twin energy and boss. Bring up Bibberol, and maybe you can two hit that Pokemon. Is there a world where you, is, is one of the needed pieces in the discard pile, maybe early Silene, try to flip those coins, put it back on top, draw with the Rose Tower if you're able to thin down further. But Sander already recognizing that things are getting pretty dire here in game three. Unfortunately, Azul had the tools and resources to really draw things out in the second game because he was able to take the win in game one. Is it slightly advantaged here going into game three? Yeah, Quick Ball is going to grab the Meowth, and that will continue to be a way to thin this hand down. Maybe the Rose Tower gets uh, just a step closer to finding the right pieces. Yep, just discards the Flannery and the Scoop Up Net. Look through your deck for the Galarian Preserker that is not there, and shuffle your deck once more. Rose Tower and one more card in the hand for Sander. Three more potential draws to find something workable. Boss's orders, twin energy. Let's see it, Kyle. That is no way, Jose. Peonia going to be the supporter for the turn. Wait, let me check my other hand. Looks in the prizes. <laughs> The, uh, and the players rules. are just getting clarification from the judge at the table about how the time rules are truly going to work. They know what the situation is here. And Sander, after looking through the, at looking through the prizes with the Peonia, looks through the discard pile, sees if within this small sliver of cards, there lurks a game plan. And Azul... Finding the one prize off of that Storlax is in a winning position here, Kyle, in game three. Yeah, this is uh, going to be a wild way to close out such a thrilling match. Sander on this turn one right now of time. The way that game one played out, Azul just biding his time until he got the Phoebe pal pad combo to get that KO on the mill tank and then immediately have the threat of another upcoming Phoebe to keep Sander under control. I'm so happy that throughout this set, we got to see both decks make use of absolutely every single concept that they could put together to try to threaten their opponent and a guest starring showdown from the Mewtwo V Union to close out that second game. Yeah, Azul holding on to a boss's orders in hand right now. Could potentially go and grab a second prize card. Just going to read every arm and leg in that discard pile and figure out what he's really up against. Is there some sneaky threat that can come down and take multiple prize cards here? The, the full Mewtwo V Union is in the discard pile and could be on the field next turn, but generally it needs a little extra time. 
Yeah, we saw with that Psy Explosion, 16 damage counters put on your opponent's Pokemon in any way you like, being able to spread that around, pick up a prize, maybe weaken something else. But I think that Azul, after crunching the numbers, is confident here that he might be able to take this and actually use the boss's orders. Rose Tower filling the hand back up. Quick Ball going to throw away the Evital and just a Pukamuku in the hand. So you can pitch that and draw one more card. We'll see if Sander can make use of the Mewtwo V Union here. Going to pitch and take a look. Oh, I think that the players understand what just happened here. Sander's going to fall just a little bit short with one of the most impressive decks we have ever seen on the international stage. What a surprise, what a treat, but in the end, it is going to be Azul Garcia Griego making his way 